This is Pilot Pass, where we talk about pilot episodes of TV shows, or as some uncool people might call them, first episodes of TV shows. <laughs> I, I am your co-host, Donahue, and joining me today is an esteemed colleague that I've known for so long that I knew him before the pandemic of 2020. It's Zsa, Zsa Gabor. Zsa, oh, thank you. Yes. To the show. Glad to be here. We are happy to have you, Zsa, Zsa. How is life being 125 years old now? Uh, it's great. I think I lost one of my legs uh, due to amputation, <laughs> if I remember my news correctly. Mm, mm, that's and, tough. Uh, but I'm doing great. Other than that, still that COVID free. There you go. Good job, Zaja. How about Michael? Michael is actually my guest today. He is a friend of the show. He has hosted before. He hosts his own show as well, MZ Now, which you can find wherever you find your podcast. Recent guests includes Richard Kind and Kevin freaking Costner, man. I'm so jealous. Isn't that crazy? I didn't know what to ask him. I, when, he, when you're that big, I don't, luckily Clark knows what to ask. He's the co-host on the show. He knows what to ask. But uh, I was like, uh, you get nervous. What do you ask oh, a legend, you know? I have a thousand questions and I would have been nervous and only it's been like, <laughs> hi, Mr. Costner. Thank you. <laughs> right. I felt like Chris Farley during that whole interview. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, it was great. Um, I love all the recent guests that you've had. You've just been killing it over there. So everybody go listen to Michael's show. You will enjoy it. However, today we are talking on Pilot Pass about our own thing, Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet, the new show on Apple TV from the people that brought you It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, another show nobody can ever remember the name to. Charlie Day, <laughs> Megan Gantz, and Rob McElhaney are the creators of the show. Mythic Quest, first reaction, Michael, what did you think? First episode, I was trying to think if I would have continued on had I not known Rob McElhaney, you know, his previous work. Yes. And I think my answer would be maybe because I like how it surround, it, it's surrounds, it's all about the video game world. And I don't know <laughs> enough about it. I'm a, on the consumer side. I'm a terrible video game player. <laughs> and I uh, kind of wish I was on the other side. I wish I worked at a a game studio and kind of saw the, the inner workings of that. And so this kind of takes you into that world. So first impression, was it hilarious? Was it always sunny? No, but it had enough there to keep me going. I agree with all those things. It's always sunny light. Like it's not nearly as offensive, I would say, right. as the early, uh, it's always sunny. Um, the idea of the show is the owner of a successful video game design company and his troubled staff struggled to keep their hit game Mythic Quest on top. So we're not dealing with on the come up, we're already at the top and we're trying to stay there. Um, so I really like that idea as well, as opposed to Always Sunny, they were always on the bottom. Right. Always on the bottom. The pilot episode that we will talk about, just like we do on every pilot pass, is entitled Pilot. Sometimes they get creative, sometimes they do not. This time they did not. And it is, as the hit video game Mythic Quest prepares to launch its newest update, creator Ian Grimm obsesses over a minor detail. That I have minor to correct detail, you on that. Oh, did I lie? Have I already lied? Tell me. No, uh, it's not Ian, it's Ian. Oh, yes. He would have yelled at me for that. that <laughs> right. I probably just got fired. fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is so my bad. That is so true. What a great character to start off with. Um, the owner of the place. He is, what would you... What would be the best word to describe him besides crazy? Eccentric. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. Very uh, egotistical, I think, too. You know, so to run a successful game company, don't you have to be all of that, you know? Yeah, I you got to be a little crazy. You got to yeah. be a little eccentric. You, you got to build a uh, uh, office that's above everybody else and has <laughs> giant ridiculous picture of the, of the game on the front. You have right. a little peep out box where you can go and talk to people. That's the kind of person that has to leave a video Isn't the game peep out box also the crotch <laughs> it, is, it is right in the crotch area i'm yeah. sure that wasn't planned right uh it's little things like that that I, I really did enjoy this show now the first thing you said was maybe on if this is something that you continue to watch i agree with you as well this was the show that it felt like that they were given the platitude to develop things like they didn't yeah. really have to consider themselves on the clock when they made this pilot so i think that the humor that eventually comes with the show, it's not necessarily there in the first episode because they know they have time to develop it and get to it. Yeah, I would agree with that. The first episode is definitely world building. It's, it's building the, uh, the rules of the, of the game or the show. So mm -hmm. it's, it takes a little bit of time to get through. 
I love what you did there. It is world building. And yeah, one of the I was key, trying to make a game. You nailed it. Reference, Boom. Yeah. That's why you are a professional, sir. That's why right. you're a professional. Um, one of the keys to the first episode is about game building, whether the shovel can be a game building thing or does it need to be violent? That is the conundrum around the office. Whose side did you fall on, Michael? Well, I like uh, Poppy, so I'm going to fall on the Poppy side. So what, usually whatever Poppy – Poppy on the show is the voice of reason yes. most times. <laughs> and, Sometimes. Uh, right. So I, uh, I usually find myself siding with whatever Poppy says. So I like the, the route she was going, and uh, yeah. Me and you, same Poppy page. 2020. Poppy 2020, I'm on board. Um, if she runs with The Rock, that would be even better. We will see yeah. what, the, what, what has <laughs> or Kanye or Kanye. Oh, maybe not Kanye. Let's not do that. Michael, let me ask you a question. Where sure. did you first hear of Mythic Quest? What was your first exposure to the show? I think I saw an ad for it. And I was actually, funny enough, I was watching Always Sunny. I was binging it first time through when I saw the ad. So I knew as soon as I was done with Always Sunny, I was going to jump on this show. I'm like, what? There's more, uh, you know, Rob McElhaney and, and Charlie Day, which Charlie, by the way, spoiler, is, is not in this show. He just co-created it. Um, so I was happy to jump on when I saw that ad. I think it was probably on, I don't know, uh, something on a an Apple product, iPhone or something. I saw it somewhere and I thought it might be interesting. Do you currently have the Apple TV? No. The great thing about Apple TV. Mm hmm is that you can sign up for the free trial, which, whatever that is, seven days, 14 days, doesn't matter. It could be 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And you can watch everything Apple TV has to offer. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, I don't know how much money they're making off of this thing, but you can watch both Apple TV shows that they, they have, all the content in 24 hours. It's fantastic. So I so don't have it, no. I so signed up and I canceled. A short weekend with that and Quibi, and you've taken care of everything. Everything, with those two. yep. Uh, the way that we watch TV now, it is crazy. So, uh, as we've talked about a little bit, this is from the creators of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They needed a new show uh, after, what, 14 seasons of It's Always Sunny. Wanted a little bit of a uh, mix-up to their daily routine, I am sure. Like you said, Charlie is not on the show, but I feel like that his creative manic energy is definitely part of, of, the, um, of the show, of the energy of the show. Mm -hmm. and they bring in somebody from It's Always Sunny to be the um, the the I guess the biz guy in the office, David, um, who comes from It's Always Sunny. I feel like that that was a perfect touch that they brought over. He's not too insane, but he's just insane enough to be the perfect biz person in the show. Right. He's definitely toned down Cricket. Yes. It's like if Cricket didn't have all those awful things happen to him and never right. went into the, uh, the ministry, uh, whatever you call it, the priesthood. Yes. Uh, that's how he would turn out to be. Oh, man. I never thought I needed the show to tell me how that was going to go, but I definitely do. <laughs> His energy is, is so great. Him working with Danny Pudi is some of the best stuff on the show. Um, Danny plays uh, somebody from the other side, and they're always, there's always a, a fight or an argument because he manipulates David because David's the most easily manipulated person to come along in, in a long time in a, t in a TV show. Yeah, I agree. I, I like that interaction between them two, and that it stays for the entire uh, series and I love it. It's it's you know Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd essentially you know going back and forth. They found the teams, the duos in the show that works really well together pretty quickly. So you yeah. know you have Poppy uh, at the top and then you got them, those two working together. I love the interaction that the two gamers that are te the testers have together. Yeah. They may be, be my favorite duo of the whole show. Did yeah, I like them too. And I I it's again it, you, you, it takes you in the, the places that you don't really realize exist you know that there's testers but you don't realize they're there and it's just a cool little look on it uh, the like i said the inner workings of, of a video game company and their relationship the two testers were i thought were, were great technically speaking i have been a video game tester before in the sense that my friend was a video game tester and i watched over his shoulder so i felt yeah. like i knew what was going on you felt like did you have any uh like non flashbacks to that period when you're watching those scenes. <laughs> I, f I felt like I knew all the pain that they were going through. Yeah, you pick up the lingo mm -hmm. that they were they were saying. You're like, oh, I've been there. I've done that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's old hat for me. That's for sure. I always wanted to be a video game tester, but I didn't know how to get started, and I thought I could make a career out of it. But you still could. You're still young, Michael. You're still young. Yeah, and that's all I've got now are just video games, thanks to <laughs> Corona. So maybe right. maybe that's my future. Oh, I, I just assumed that you switched to tiddlywinks by now. 
Yeah, <laughs> that too. And OnlyFans, of course. I have to provide content on there and stuff. So, yeah, that's a good follow as well. Donate some money for Michael's dancing on there. I'm telling you, it's worth right. it's worth the three dollars. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. So we've already talked about some uh, f- favorite parts of the show, uh, but I want to kind of get into some of the moments of the show itself that we really enjoyed, or maybe you didn't like so much. Was there one scene, one moment, uh, one discussion that you really kind of remember from the pilot that highlights everything that you like about it? Yes. Uh, it was, it's got to be the moment where they, th- so they're testing out this new feature or a new item and uh, it all rides on what the video game reviewer, so the Twitch streamer or the YouTube streamer, whatever, it all rides on what his, what he thinks. And he's like a, uh, like an eight year old kid or whatever, you know, filthy potty mouth kid brat. And uh, so they're all waiting to see what he thinks of this new item. And the whole, the whole thing hinges on that. Everyone in the office stops to watch this broadcast. Um, I just thought that whole scene, the whole idea of it, even though it's sadly realistic, um, was just hilarious. I like that whole bit. So uh, realistic and so terrifying in that way, because that is kind of how things are now. This 11 year old kid that's named Pootie Shoe is going (laughs) to decide if your company is going to continue or if you're going to go broke. Right. Look, look what happened to Telltale. You know, I assume that uh, some weird four-year-old streamer on uh, Twitch said something bad about their game and there they go. Yeah. Down the hatch. Off and out and you don't get to come back and play anymore. One of the other characters that I've known her for a while, she's a comedian, um, she always slays me, is Michelle. She's the only female coder in the group, but every time they go to visit yeah. her, her <laughs> sadness and her just morose energy <laughs> just livens up my day every time. Yeah. No, she's great. And uh, I've seen her a lot in other shows since then. She, that was my first uh, introduction to her. And she's hilarious in every role you put, you put her in. She's great. Yeah, she's really, really good. I've seen some of her stand-up before. Such a, a biting set that she has. And, uh, and I'm so glad she's in the show. And, I, and again, it's another real-world thing that you know that's true, that there's a lot of times only one female coder, if any female coders, in any video game office. Yeah, exactly. And I like how they make like her quick wits. Well, it doesn't, she's not very quick, but she has these little quips that she, right. that she uh, throws to. Usually it's uh, Poppy. And I just like that interaction. I just like that. The, I like how the coders are in some like dungeon, <laughs> like, you know, on the very bottom. Nobody pays attention to them. They're in this very cold and concrete room. It's, it's, I thought it was, that whole thing is hilarious. Definitely no windows down there. They are as isolated as isolated can be. It's like rats in a maze or rats yeah. on a, you know, just, uh, I can't imagine being that kind of video game developer. They abuse those poor people so much. They, yeah. Again, they work 20 hour days for, for the vision of a crazy person that's running the company. And uh, I would never want to be that. Never, ever, ever. Right. Same here. I, I, you know, I think about that often when I'm playing like a game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption and think about all the, the people who slaved over this and uh, and then I go back to playing the game and don't worry about it anymore. There you go. They figured life out. They're okay. Yeah, they're, they're okay. They got a free copy of the game, I'm sure. Maybe. At least a discount on it, probably. Right. Was there any negatives on the first episode? Something that you didn't feel comfortable with? Something that you think did not work? No, I just think that um, it took a little bit to get used to the tone of the show. It wasn't something that you just kind of slipped into. It's kind of like buying a brand new shoe and you got to wear it in a little bit. It was very, the shoe was very stiff. The first episode felt very stiff. It didn't feel very comfortable and homey. Um, That was the only thing that I would say was, was negative about it. And there wasn't really a whole lot of laughs in the first episode. It was weird that I agree completely that it was stiff and somebody that's done TV show, a TV show for 14 seasons, you know, you think that there might be some kind of easier way to roll into a new show, but it's just a reminder that every time you start a new project like that, basically everybody's starting from one and you got to figure out your chemistry and you got to figure out how all those things work. And uh, it definitely was reflective in that. I think that's going to hurt some, some people from continuing to watch it because of that fact. Yeah. Again, especially if you're coming from Always Sunny thinking, oh, you know, I know this world. I know these characters. These guys are so funny. And then you jump over to this and it's totally different. That's going to turn people off the first couple episodes because it does take, it's a slow, it's a slow build. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree with you completely on that. 
All right, let's wonder out loud and talk about whether we think that this little show of ours, Mythic Quest, would be better as a movie. What says you? I'm going to say yes. I think you could have the entire first season. Actually, you probably could have gone even deeper, uh, set this world up and done an entire movie, two-hour movie, and had a lot more jokes in it, a little bit more fast pace. Um, yeah, it could have been better as a movie. Absolutely. Who or what story angle or what character do you think they would lose? I always feel like there's going to at least be one somebody that if you do a movie of it, they're going to not be able to have time for that person. So is there a character that you think might be eliminated? Maybe Michelle? I mean, yeah. No, I think you would have a Michelle in there. I think that would be something kind of a comic relief to kind of break it up. You, it might be the testers, really. It, mm. They may not have time for that little B story. And you're just kind of focused on the programmers, the, the, the business uh, heads. And, and uh, yeah, I think that's kind of, I think you would eliminate all that extra, the extra staffing. Which would be super sad because, again, yeah. that's, that's one of my as – as they go along, there's another person that's thrown into the mix, and so they have to learn how to deal with that person. It's just <laughs> – oh, comedy gold, I tell you, comedy yeah. gold. Uh, I think it would be interesting as a movie. I'm always curious how um, TV creators translate over to making films. Uh, it's not always a smooth process, and it doesn't always work. But I think that these guys are talented enough that I would be happy to give them a chance. The energy was going to be different. Um, I, I think it might be a little funnier because you have to keep the script so tight in a feature film, whether as when you're getting nine or 10 episodes, you can have a little fluff in there and you don't have to worry about that so much. It would have been better than the movie tag. I can tell you that. You didn't like tag. It was average. I, for whatever reason, I, I thought it was really funny. And then I watched it again and it wasn't as funny as I saw it in, you know, that I remember anyways, watching it in theaters. But, uh, I was also with, some friends that also were laughing hysterically. So, you know, that also helps make you think that it's funny when it may not be. What, what is this you speak of a uh, movie theater? I don't, um, I don't. Compute. So it's an old, uh, it's an old <laughs> antique building that they yes. used to show moving pictures in. And wow. uh, this is before, this is when society could gather together. It was a, a very different time back then. I do not remember that time at all. It's almost as, I've, as if I've been reborn. <laughs> All right, we like to do a little thing on the show. As you know, we like to play Netflix in the sense that we like to talk about shows that we might compare this show to. Now, this is not just a straight comparison. It can be, but it can be any kind of weird thing that might connect to Mythic Quest as far as something to watch after you watch Mythic Quest. So, not to put you under the gun, I will start. I'll throw out a couple, and then you can tell me what you think. I think that one of the shows that if you want to look at and compare this show to um, obviously, some office shows, as in The Office, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a lot of ensemble shows, um, but it's a show that we've done a podcast about, and I want to bring it back because people need to remember Brockmire. I think that there's a little bit of Brockmire energy with all the different kind of characters that go with this. I think that if you like Mythic Quest, I think the comedy in Brockmire will work for you as well. And Brockmire is one that I would suggest to watch after you watch Mythic Quest. So mine would be just because it's a workplace comedy and it's a little absurd. Mm -hmm. um, workaholics. Oh, That's kind of okay. what I would compare it to. And uh, what I was kind of hoping it would be as it moved, as it, as it matured in the storyline, but uh, it's still got its own thing, but it, it is kind of, I would say in that same family, it would be in that same playlist mm -hmm. uh, with workaholics. And there was another one I was trying to think of, but I, I, is it the It Crowd? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. The British show? Or IT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that show would also work well with it. That is a good recommendation because that's much better than what I was about to say. Because I was going to say, just shoot me. The classic David Spade com yeah. sitcom from the 90s. Yeah, a little bit of that as well. Because, again, there's not such a hard edge as Always Sunny. It's, uh, it's, it's softer around the mm -hmm. edges. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to do this now, even though it's not in this segment, but I keep forgetting. Did you watch the, uh, the extra episode, the 10th episode, yes. the, the lockdown? What did you think about that? Just kind of in general. I liked it because I had seen a lot of, you know, SNL did it, uh, 30 Rock did it. You know, a lot of these people are trying to do this, uh, this quarantine special. And uh, I don't think anyone... SNL's first episode uh, at home, they did really well. I thought that was great. And then after a while, they get too produced, and you get kind of comfortable with having it you know, two weeks to produce it, and it's a whole yep. thing. 
but I think um, I think out of all the shows from home, Mythic Quest did the best job. I thought that the story it didn't seem like it was built around the fact that they were home. They had uh, some some depth to it. There was even a mo- a very very sincere emotional moment at the end. I thought it was really great. I laughed. I cried. And then I canceled my Apple TV subscription. And then free out. trial. I mean, yep. I'll see done. You guys later. We always like to know, is this anyone's best? Anytime that we watch a TV show, we try to see what somebody's done before, what they're going to do after, and did they hit the top of the mountain with this project? So we'll start with Rob off the top and ask, is this his top of the mountain work? No. no. His top of the mountain has to be always sunny. Easy. Even though out of the four, he's my least favorite. <laughs> Goes that way sometimes. I agree. He's a writer, you know. He's he's you know he's doing the stuff behind the scenes, but his character on the show is my least favorite. Yeah, yeah. Except for the uh, the season where he got fat. That was that was great. (laughs) That was classic as well. I agree with you. Uh, It's going to be always sunny for him. How about Poppy Charlotte Nicdo? Nailed it. What do you think about her? I have never seen her in anything before, but she fits this role so well. So with my limited knowledge of of Poppy, as I'll, I'll call her, because I don't know how to say her uh, real name. Mm-hmm. I would say this is her her peak. This is this character was made for her. Yes, uh, check mark, nailed it. That is correct. How about shovels? Is this the apex mountain for shovels? Ooh, good question. Mm. Now there's going to be a lot of shovels involved with digging uh, places to bury bodies. So you got to keep that in mind. But this shovel really fit prominently in the storyline in a positive and negative way. Right. That's a good question. I really, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a deep dive. I really don't know. Yeah. We'll have to get back to the people on that one. I like that one. Um, how about wall art on somebody's office? Is this the apex mountain for that? I would say, yeah. I, I thought it was very, I love the placement of the art. Mm-hmm. I like the, uh, the size of the art. I thought it went very well. I liked the, it. The crotch opening really sealed the, the deal crot- for me. That was that was it. You could if you didn't have the crotch opening, I would say uh, you know I would pick something else. But the crotch opening uh, took it over the top for me. Mm, chef kiss for that. <laughs> we need to tell the people we've watched it, we've talked about it, we've thought about it. So now we need to tell them. Would you recommend just based off the pilot, Mythic Quest Ravens Banquet? Yes, if you're into the video game, uh, yes, and the little star. What is it? What's it called? A uh, asterisk. Asterisk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I would I would watch it if you are a fan of video games. If you're not a fan of video games, you're looking for a comedy to watch before you go to sleep. This is not the show for you because it's not hilarious. Um, but if you're if you're interested in the video game world and kind of want to see the inner workings, this would be a good show to start with. I love that observation. I agree with that. I like this much better than, say, a Silicon Valley because those characters just always rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, if you were, yeah, if Always Sunny brought you over, be patient with it. Yeah. If you do like video games, this is a really funny behind the scenes kind of office comedy in, in relation to that. Much better than, say, a paper company which uh, <laughs> how that became a thing, I will never know. But yes, I'm going to give it a moderate recommendation myself. And uh, it does get better. If you're waiting, if you're watching the first couple, two, three episodes, it does get better. Just hang with it. It's worth it. Even all the way to the bonus episode. I agree. I believe it's already coming back for the second season. Mm-hmm. So catch up before that happens again. And that's our thoughts. On- you can do it in a weekend for free. For free, yes. Ignore your girlfriend and watch Mythic Quest. Or make her watch it with you because she's probably not going to enjoy it because I know how your girlfriend is. Right. I don't know. I'm talking But she might identify with Poppy. (laughs) That's true. She might feel bad for Poppy and just keep watching, hoping that it gets better. I can't tell you. I don't want to spoil it. But let's just say probably not. Probably not. (laughs) So that was Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet. I always want to make sure that I get the whole title out because that's important. They thought of it. So I shall give that to him. And Rob said he, he made that title because he likes words that are hard to, like he likes stringing long titles together, barely fit on the title screen. So with Always Sunny, Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet, same thing. 
Every time I've said it this episode, I've had to look at my screen to make sure I'm saying it right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michael, for coming on again. Yeah, no MZ problem. Now is his podcast. Listen to that. Does that. It uh, comes out. What day does your podcast come out? Uh, we do. We, we release one episode on Monday. Sometimes we do a midweek show. That comes out Thursdays. Um, but yeah, so, so we, did, did a, we did our own bonus episode from home uh, this week. So you can listen to a show that came out uh, Oh, well, I don't know when you're going to post this. So I'll just, uh, I'll just go back and say Mondays and sometimes Thursdays. Excellent. That is a perfect answer. I appreciate it. Go listen to Michael's show. Enjoy it. Enjoy Pilot Pass, our newest episode. Listen, do the social medias if you want to. Take a picture with this whenever you see in public. Oh, wait, we can't do that. Take it from afar. Like, I'm a, like be a stalker and take it with a long lens because that's as close as I want to get to you. Until next time, Michael, adios. Keep looking up. That's where it all is, baby. We stole it. <laughs>